Sacramento, man. Sacramento's got a lot going for it, right? Nice weather. The Kings. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Nobody's cared about the Kings since Chris Webber was on the Kings. Th this is not even a sports show. I don't even know why I'm leading with that, right? Sacramento, though, right? You got nice weather, and a lot of people want to live there, okay? And what does that do to your housing, Sacramento? That makes your housing expensive, right? And that makes owning multiple properties very difficult. That makes it very difficult for regular people to become landlords, especially with the, the, the legislation out there, right? Woo! The legislation is making it literally impossible to be a landlord and do so profitably, right? They're trying to legislate out private property ownership in California, it seems. So what do you do? How do you continue uh, to invest in real estate as a side hustle or make that your career, right? How do you get into the game if you're not a millionaire, right? Is it possible or is it impossible living in California, specifically the Sacramento area, right? Is that still possible today? Yes, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. In fact, I got an investment, 30% return, only going to require about 20 grand. Let's talk about it right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I'm James. This is Holton Wise TV. If you like real estate, stick around. We talk about it a lot here. If you like the Sacramento Kings... I apologize. I'm sorry I made fun of them. But, like, nobody likes the Sacramento Kings. Like, the most anybody has ever talked about the Kings is when they were thinking about trading Buddy Heald to the Lakers, right? Like, I forgot that team exists, right? Holy crap, nobody cares. Anyway, today I'm talking to my man Adam. Adam lives in Sacramento. Probably doesn't watch the Kings because nobody does. Now, Adam, you're a regular guy. You're not a multimillionaire. But you are building a cash flow positive real estate portfolio, and you're doing so with small amounts of money, 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand. Everybody else watching your show is probably like, how's that possible, dude? The pricing in California is out of control. And then after that, the, the tenants, man, they're running things, right? The prisoners are running the prison. I'm probably going to get a lot of smoke for that one. People are going to be like, well, that was, that was very offensive. Anyway. Anyway, a lot of people like Adam, they invest with Holton Wise because we are the boots on the ground in other markets. Red markets, okay? Now, before you get into a hissy about politics and this or that, here's the deal, okay? When you're in a market where it's super-duper blue, uh, the landlord-tenant, you know, like you want your landlord-tenant regulations to be fairly level, right? Well, when it gets super blue like it is in Cali, it's like, wee! And then mom and pop landlords get legislated out of the business, right? So people like Adam, instead of giving up, waving the white flag, they're like, no, I'm going to look at other markets. I like living in California, but I don't have to invest there. I'm going to invest where it makes sense, right? So comes to me, and we tip those scales, right? Places with low cost of living, places where you can get consistent rent, places where if you run into a problem with your tenants, you're actually able to evict them, things of that nature, right? And I got a deal for you today, Adam. 21 grand, projecting about a 30% return long term. We are going to get into it right now on a dollar for dollar basis. So I encourage anybody who's watching this who doesn't believe that's possible to continue to watch the show. But don't try to buy the property because it's gone. I sent this to Adam months ago privately. If you want to work with me to find similar properties and get the same real-time one-on-one experience that Adam is getting uh, in the show notes below. You can fill out the form to get a free call, free consultation with my team, and we'll talk to you about how we can work with you one-on-one -on -one and help you build your real estate portfolio, help you accomplish your real estate goals no matter where you live. If you're in Sacramento and it's impossible to do at home, you've been legislated out of the business by the politicians who are selling your rights for votes, that is okay. Where I live, Gavin Newsom don't run shit. Let's go. Hey, Steve. What are you doing?
Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. This, this is the meat and potatoes of the show. I appreciate you sticking around this long, and I doubly appreciate those of you who did not fast forward through the commercial break. Man, I'm selling stuff. Buy it, man. Jesus. Anyway, here's the property, okay? This property is going to work very, very well. I like this property a lot. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of people are going to like this property. I think we're going to have a bidding war. Why? Because I'm projecting out a 30% cash on cash return, and we're only looking at a monetary investment of $21,250. $21,250 to get yourself a safe, sound real estate investment that I believe if everything pans out how I want it to, how I think it should, you'll make around 30%. There's almost no markets in the United States where that can be accomplished, right? But we can accomplish it here. The address is 802 West 9th Street. It's in a city called Lorain, Ohio. Just hit the market at 79900 okay? We need to move quick. This is going to be a brutal bidding war, I guarantee you. I believe the price we need to pay is going to be $85,000, okay? Now, here's what you need to know about Lorain, Ohio. It's in the Cleveland market, right? Cleveland, Ohio is an incredibly popular market on a nationwide scale. I'm going to cruise through some photos so you guys can see the home, why I'm speaking here, right? This is the vacant unit. They've already spruced it up, all right? It's ready to rock. Looks to be completely rent ready. We'll, of course, do more due diligence with the home inspection to verify, but it looks like you got a pretty rent ready unit. And then the other unit has already got a tenant in there. One unit they're getting seven and a quarter. That unit's vacant. But market rent for these units, what we're going to want to advertise that vacant unit for is going to be 850 The other unit market rent, 850 as well. 1600 Each of those units are three beds, right? So 19200 right? 19200 in rent. And they're priced it at $79.9, which brings me back to what I was getting into before I got a little off track. It's in the Cleveland market, but it's in this city called Lorain. If this was in the city of Cleveland itself, this would already be gone, and it probably would have sold for like $115,000, okay? But what is so great about Lorain is it's off the radar, right? Cleveland, <clears throat> you get a lot of investment from all over the country, really, all over the world, honestly. If you are Googling things like, oh, where's the best real estate markets, this or that, or how do you get cash flow, what are the best cash flow markets, all these national publications, they're always ranking Cleveland in the top 10 for all these markets, right? So everybody starts coming to Cleveland, and it's bringing pricing up, okay? Lorraine is like a half hour west, okay? So it's in the greater Cleveland area. But it's off a lot of people's radar. They're so laser-focused, right? The tunnel vision on Cleveland, they're missing out on a lot of deals. And to show you, like, exactly how close it is and how much everybody just refers to Cleveland as opposed to all the other areas, some things you need to know. The city of Cleveland, right? It's like 345,000 people live in the city of Cleveland. The greater area, it's like 4 million people, okay? So there's a lot more to the Cleveland market than Cleveland. Like, everyone talks about the most famous Clevelander ever, LeBron James, right? LeBron is the most famous dude from Cleveland. LeBron's not from Cleveland. LeBron is from Akron, which is about a half hour southeast of Cleveland, right? So this property, this city, Lorraine, same distance from Cleveland as Akron, essentially, just in a different direction, right? So it's all in the same area, but no one pays attention. And that allows us to come in and squeak out even better returns, even higher returns than we do in Cleveland. Not to mention, I think the government in Lorraine is much easier to deal with than Cleveland, okay? Cleveland is starting to get uh, a little bit more tenant-friendly than it needs to, right? Like, they got the lead-based paint uh, testing and stuff. That's kind of a pain in everybody's butt, right? So, like, L Lorraine... In my opinion, I think we're doing better in Lorraine. And that's what you're paying me for, right? You're paying me to be the guy in the market who knows what's up, right? 
Who's here to help you get the best investments? Who's here to shift gears when it's time to shift, to keep you ahead of the curve, to keep you uh, ahead of the eight ball or however that saying is, something like that with an eight ball. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I do, folks. $200 million in sales, running the biggest portfolio in the area, property management, maintenance, construction, insurance anywhere in Ohio. Even if you don't buy through us, reach out to us. Maybe we could lower your insurance premium. I almost guarantee you we can't because all we do is landlord insurance, right? That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. That's what allows investors to invest from anywhere in the country in Cleveland and know my team is on the ground to take care of all the things for them. And it starts here with the show, starts here with education, starts here with showing you guys sneaky good deals like this one that are probably going to fall through the cracks that a lot of people aren't going to notice. Because I can almost guarantee you, all you people that come to Holton Wise, you heard something about Cleveland, but you never heard nothing about Lorraine. Am I right? Love it. Tenant base, very similar to what we get on the west side of Cleveland, too. It's like C-ish, right? It's very good. Okay, so with all that said, that's why it's priced so low, but we're still going to have to pay above list price. Again, if this was Cleveland, it would have sold for 115 already. I want us to pick it up for 85 Now, if we factor in the market rents I've given you already, $1,600, $19,200 for the year, I believe after fixed and variable expense estimates to pay Holton Wise to handle this investment for you, you're looking at a clear NOI of approximately eight sixteen a month, right? That's almost ten grand a year. Under normal operating circumstances. Won't be the same every month. Won't be the same every year. Unlimited amount of variables at play when you are investing in rental real estate, folks. But it should shake out, right? If you owned like 10 of these things over 30 years, I would anticipate that to be your average performance each each and every year, right? Or over the totality of the investment. It would average out to that, right? There'll be peaks. There'll be valleys, right? So, at 85k, right? We're going to come in 5,100 above list to ensure we get the deal. You put down 21 and a quarter, bank kicks in 63 and 3 quarters, and if you don't have a lender, I will get you one, right? I have lenders for you guys. They loan to investors in all 50 states. They also loan to investors out of the country. We have private lenders, hard money lenders. We got the whole shebang. And if you're watching this show, just trying to learn, and you're interested in new properties and you want my list of lenders, just send my team an email. We will get that to you, right? So with all that, I believe we're looking at a 31% long-term cash-on-cash return with market rate tenants or a 12 cap. Super solid deal. It is a 100-year-old property, though, right? So when we do that inspection, you have to understand, you're not getting a new roof, you're not getting new furnaces, you're not getting a new hot water tank, okay? Those are probably going to be mid to end of life, right? Like, take furnaces. They take uh, a lifespan. They usually have a lifespan of about 30 years, okay? They usually cost about three grand to replace, right? So if I'm a seller and I got a furnace that's 22 years old and it still works, why would I replace it? Of course I wouldn't, right? So don't be alarmed by that, right? It's built into the super cheap price. Same thing with hot water tanks, although the price there is about a grand, and they last about 15 years. Roofs last about 30. Cost this roof, eh, it's probably about a 7000 Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Maybe like an $8,000 roof, right? Like, uh, this is like a unique thing, and that's going to add some cost, truth be told. That's like not something we have a million of. So, like, we're probably going to be like eight k and up, maybe like eight to 9 k for a roof like this. But, again, same same thing applies, right? If I'm selling this property and it's got five years of life left in it, why would I replace it? Of course I wouldn't, right? Just build it into the price. So it's a screamer of a deal. We can get it for 85 k It is a hell of a deal. We'll rent the vacant unit uh, to a market rate tenant, probably Section 8. That's how you get the most consistent payers, folks. I love the Section 8 program. I know a lot of people bag on Section 8. I don't. People have this thought that, like, Section 8 tenants are going to be worse than cash-paying tenants. Your tenants are going to be determined. The quality of your tenants are going to be determined by the quality of your asset, right? If you got A-grade properties in an A-grade neighborhood, you're getting A-grade tenants. B, you're getting B. C, you're getting C. D, you're getting D. F, you're getting F. You get what I'm saying? So when you start getting into C, D, and F, okay, you're already getting C, D, and F grade tenants. You ain't getting B and A grade tenants, right? So when you're into the tenants that are at that level of risk, the biggest problem with them is their inability to pay rent all the time, frequency of evictions, right? So you eliminate that problem by going Section 8, right? When you're in A and B, you know, A and B tenants 
don't usually get evicted by non-payment of rent. So yeah, you avoid Section 8 in those kind of neighborhoods. But CDNF, Section 8, in my opinion, is the more desirable type of CDNF tenant, right? So we'd want to go Section 8. And then the other tenant that's been in there for a while, we'll just rock them at their current rent and slowly increase it so you don't have to incur any turnover cost to eventually get them up to market rent. So this deal, friggin' screamer, let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.